Hi, we're gonna show today a demo of how you can use uh, Memfold over Bleacon on the NRF54L15DK. So I've got my development kit here. Uh, I've got VS Code in which I've loaded the Bleacon device SDK, which is available in GitHub, but also uh, you can uh, find it from the NRF Connect SDK add-ons list. And finally, I've got my Memfault instance uh, loaded here as well. So the first thing we'll do is build that Memfault example from the Bleacon device SDK. So I'll open an existing application and here I'll select the Memfault uh, example. Once that's done, uh, I'll create a build configuration and What's important here is to select the right bolt, so the NR54L15DK. Uh, everything else should can be left as is. Uh, what I've done in the background as well uh, is that I've connected my device to my Bleacon network, and I've configured my network to point at my manifold instance. So that means that once this device starts talking to the Bleacon infrastructure, we should be able to get some data into Memfault and also perform a firmware update layer. So it's building in a moment. And once that's done, let's flash it uh, onto the DK. Okay, so the build is now complete. So I can flash the example onto the development board. And I'm doing that once again from the NRF Connect VS Code extension. And what, uh, I've also opened up that terminal, which is connected to the, to the DK, and will give, you, give me some information about what's going on on the, on the board. Okay, so the board has been flashed, and you can see quite a bit of information coming through. Uh, something quite important is that this is my device ID. Uh, and we can also see that uh, this example was built with a specific software version, which is basically just all zeros because we haven't really configured it specifically, but you can change that version number if you want to. And what we can, uh, can do first is see that that device should now be visible in my Memfault instance. So the device connected to the Bleacon infrastructure and basically sent uh, an event to Memfault. And now we, we see that um, it was added to my, to my uh, Memfault project. The second thing we're gonna try is get the uh, device to crash and, and show uh, how that uh, crash dump is being reported into Memfault. So, one thing we need to do to enable this is um, have the symbol files loaded into Memfall. So I'm going to find the relevant symbol file. That elf file right here. So now it's, it's now in my Memphis project. And I'm back into VS Code and the uh, terminal connected to the to the development kit. And you can see that one of the commands we can issue to that device is crash, and that should crash the device. And you can see here that Zephyr is reporting a fault, which is what we expected. And so that basically triggered uh, a device reset. And prior to that, the Memfault SDK was able to stall that crash dump, which means that now that it's reset, it should have been able to upload that crash dump to Memfault. So let's go back here. And if I see, I can see here that the device was seen again. And 
if I go to my issues, you can see here that I have a trace for a new issue, which is basically a bus fault uh, that was triggered by me typing that crash command. And you can sort of see the stack trace here and dive into what happened. Well, at least that's what you would do with a real life use case. Okay, so now let's 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 move on to what we would do if we found that uh, our software had some uh, had that bug, uh, and and we wanted to to fix it and roll out an update uh, in production. So I've prepared a, an OTA release in Memfall uh, for version two point zero point zero, which uh, I'm very hopeful will fix that issue. So I've already prepared it and the only thing I'll do now is activate it uh, for my device to, to fetch. So let's go back to my serial terminal and I'll reset the device and this time uh, it will be able to find that there's an update available and, uh, and now the device can pull it from uh, the network and uh, apply it prior to uh, rebooting into that new app. So let's uh, let's wait for it to download download the the new app. Okay, so all those chunks have been downloaded, and now you can see that the device has reset into MCU boot. MCU boot is basically verifying and applying that new firmware image to the device. So MCU boot has finished uh, applying the update and now you can see and the, the, the main difference is that my new firmware is now running on version, it, it's version 2.0.0 as expected and you can also see that we, we confirm the firmware update with MCU boot which means that if I reset my device, MP would won't attempt to roll it back. Something we can check as well is that on the manifold side of things, the correct version number is uh, being reported as, as well. So when, when the device reset, it uh, connected once again to Blink infrastructure and uh, was able to send its new version number to manifold. So now manifold knows that our device is now up to date.